Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello yet again, folks. This is another edition of North Fulton Business Radio, and I'm John Ray. We're coming to you virtually, not from our normal spot inside of Renaissance Bank on Windward Parkway in Alpharetta, but we still love the folks there. And if you are a small bank seeking to get better attention to your business and you're tired of the mega bank experience that involves 1-800 numbers and computer-generated voices and all that um, unhappy stuff you have to deal with, uh, give the folks at Renaissance a try. RenaissanceBank.com is the website. They've got 200 offices across the South uh, ready and waiting to serve you. The only uh, thing you've got to do is call them ahead of time and make them appo- and a, make an appointment because they are um, close to walk-ins, but they're happy to help you. So you just have to make an appointment and, and uh, uh, sit down and explain their problem, and they'll help you out. Um, and if you're in North Fulton, I can give you some recommendations on folks you ought to call. Uh, but uh, if you're, they've got branches across the South, and go to RenaissanceBank.com to find your nearest location. And uh, give them a call. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. And we're joined now by Rhonda Youngblood. Rhonda is the owner and executive director of Infinity Learning Educational Services. Rhonda, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, John. Yeah, it's great to have you. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Infinity Learning Educational Services. What do you do for folks out there? Absolutely. Well, Infinity Learning is a tutoring and test prep company. um, And our goal is to provide services for students um, as young as um, elementary school age to adults uh, with their learning goals, helping students with academic subjects, test prep, uh, professional development, you know, any of those areas to help increase uh, their academic knowledge. So a lot there, and I'm particular, you piqued my interest in professional development, but we need to take care of the kids first. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but let's talk a little bit about you and how you, uh, what your entrepreneurial journey has been and, and why you opened this business and you're not a franchise by the way, correct? I mean, there's a lot of no, franchises no. <laughs> out there. Okay. Yes. Well, no, we're not a franchise. I actually have been in the tutoring and test prep um, and uh, education and services for over 20 years. I started out as a college uh, instructor for math um, at a university in Louisville, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I kind of stumbled upon it, tutor, the tutoring industry Um, looking to just be a part of uh, providing services for students in in, in Indianapolis. And uh, and I I began with um, one of the larger um, tutoring companies in the industry, you know, working door to door, uh, signing kids up for tutoring. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, it became something that was a passion of mine to help students um, who would normally not be able to have the resource of a tutoring provider um, to have that resource was just amazing to me to be able to give back to the community. Um, so as uh, as I, I, I gained more experience and knowledge in the industry, um, I, I thought it was it was important to be able to meet students where they are and create programs that were individualized and focused directly on them. Um, and that's also meeting the needs of the family in, as a whole. Um, and so that's where the idea for Infinity Learning came about. Um, and then I have lots of friends who are private tutors on their own independently. Um, and I wanted to be a clearinghouse for them and be able to uh, help to promote and market them um, and be able to uh, give them some opportunities with tutoring students. So we decided to collaborate and work together. So um, I hire on, I bring on uh, professionals in the industry to be able to support the families, they have experienced tutoring for years or teaching in a classroom. Um, and so we are able to really help one another. What are the advantages you think you have, Rhonda, 
being independent versus being a franchisee of a bigger tutoring uh, entity? Good, good question. I have, uh, have, having worked for a franchise company before, I did not like kind of the, 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 the binding that they, they, they require you to do specific things at specific times in a specific way. Um, so the programs uh, are really a, a corporate or a franchise designed curriculum or program. So every student who's in a particular grade or taking a particular subject have to follow that specific curriculum. Well, we know that all students are not the same. All students are not identical. They don't learn the same. Um, and sometimes you need to use other materials, supplemental materials, and have the flexibility to change programs to match what their need are. And so being independent and I'm able to really um, control that more and also get, get feedback from our tutors and um, people who are specialists in the industry who can collaborate together to provide the proper program for each individual student. So, so I'm not, uh, you know, they're limitless, the, uh, the way that we can create and design a program for a student to specifically meet what they need. Now, Rhonda, I mean, let's get right to it because, um, you know, folks wonder how anybody uh I guess, operates during a pandemic. And that's particularly true for a company like yours, because when I think tutoring, I think of a, of a tutor sitting next to a student, right next to a student, right? Physically sitting next to a student. So talk about how you've made the adjustment and how you're currently operating today. Well, you know, in the beginning, we had no choice. Uh, you know, everything was, was shut down. And so just, you know, I, this word that everyone's using, this pivoting, uh, we, we had to pivot to make adjustments to still meet the needs of their families who were desperately seeking some support, um, keeping everyone safe, uh, following the federal and state and local guidelines at the same time. So we started with designing um, our online program actually right before COVID. So it kind of worked out, you know? Um, And I say that, you know, you know, God knows ahead of time, what's, you know, what the plan is going to be and he puts you in this right place. So I, I, I follow that. And so we began working on on our online program before pre COVID. And it just meant that as, as things changed, we had to really put a little bit of a rush on it to get everything designed. But we had students immediately in our online program at the end of March. And then we supported families during the spring when no one knew exactly how this was going to work. They just knew that their child was at home all day um, and they knew that there was work to be done, and but they weren't sure how it was going to work. So we created programs around the need during the pandemic. So our, our accountability coaching program came out of that, which is a new program, which uh, allowed families to have a support system with a coach um, to meet with their student as many times as they wanted a week virtually. Uh, we can share screens. Or so, technology is so great because you can actually mimic being next to each other, but not really next to one another. We can share screens. We can actually participate actively on both sides of the screen um, so the student can write on the whiteboard. Um, we can solve problems together. We can actually, it's opened up a wealth of other resources that are also online that we can share together. We can use resources that our students normally wouldn't be able to, to have gain access to during the school day in other countries with collaborations with uh, administ- uh, with administrators and educators in other countries so that they could have some experiences. Um, so I think I look at this as not a, oh my goodness, it's COVID, we can't meet face-to-face. We think of it as, as an exciting opportunity um, to, to start trying something new, to use technology, um, still having that closeness because you have a connection with the tutor during that time, face-to-face or your coach face-to-face and they can help you with your homework. They can help you if you're struggling with a concept or if you're behind and you need to get ahead, you still have that coach who's right there face-to-face on Zoom or whatever platform and are able to still connect with you um, with that respect and then still be able to really interact with you. Folks, we're here chatting with Rhonda Youngblood and Rhonda is the owner and executive director 
of infinity learning. Rhonda, one of the things I heard there that is that, you know, again, contrary to the mental picture you have about a tutor who meets periodically, let's say once a week and once a month or whatever, there's not much interaction in between, if any. What I heard there was there's more frequent interaction with yes. a tutor and academic coach online or virtually than there is in person. Absolutely. Because now the, the, the issue with travel time, I have to come to your office, the tutor has to come to you. Um, it's much easier to open up your schedule. If I have a student in, uh, you know, 20 miles away and I have to have a break for drive time in between that, I can actually support more students. It's, it's definitely more convenient because it's, you know, you're right there. You can just click and log in. I think that the time that we spend is actually better together at that because we're using every single minute together. Um, and I'm not uh, worried about, okay, well, you got caught in traffic trying to get to me, or it's, it's raining so much, we're going to be delayed getting here. Um, so now, you know, you can just click on any time. It also helps with scheduling as far as um, I need more sessions or, we need to change the date of the session. Okay, sure. You know, we can schedule this on Zoom. We can click on it anytime from any device, from anywhere. I have students who've been on vacation at the beach and they can log on to their session at the beach. You can't have, you can't have tutoring on your summer break if you're going out of town because your tutor can't, unless you're taking your tutor with you, but I would love that. But you, know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have a special offer for somebody that wants to do that, right? Okay. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, well, let, let's talk a, a, about the importance of having a tutor generally. And I guess maybe the first way to go at this is beyond just the fact that when the grades come in, they're horrible, which is kind of too late then. Yes. <laughs> How do I know when, when I need to hire a tutor for my child? Okay. So I will answer that first by explaining that there are so many resources out there. And then you, you have a tutor and then you have a coach. There's a difference between the two. And how do you know when you need one or the other? So a tutor is usually that person who's that emergency. I'm, I'm, we're, we're failing. I, I need to get an A. Um, there's usually an, an end game, uh, so to speak, when you need, when you need a tutor. You know that I, I've got to get the grades up. I've got to get somewhere. A coach or a an accountability coach or an academic coach is looking to um, almost do surgery. Let's get to the core of it. Let's figure out what's the problem because there's, sometimes there's some underlying things that are, are going on. Uh, and once you can adjust those, organization could be one of those things. Uh, it's note taking is one of those things. So those are some things you can dive deeper into. And as far as when you need a, a, a tutor, it's easy when they're failing, you know, mm. it's easy to see. But what if uh, we do have some parents, uh, some students, I'm sorry, that are good at hiding what's going on. So parents don't know until they get that report card. Um, and usually it happens in higher grades because you don't have the interaction as you would with elementary and middle school teachers reaching out to you. So there was a lot of independence going on there for high schoolers. And so parents usually don't find out until it's almost the end of the semester or um, the grades are in and they're about to graduate or something. You know, they're trying to figure out, ah, no, we're not going to make it. So we do get those calls, but we also get the calls from parents who notice changes in their student. So whether that's some anxiety, uh, frustration when it's time to do homework, um, wh whether it's um, they've they lock themselves in their room and the parents are like, I'm not really not sure what's going on uh, when I check the grades or assignments that aren't turned in. So their grades are normally great, but they're not turning in assignments. So they're losing credit on those from those assignments. And now their grades are in the tanker. Um, so those are those are times when parents will reach out to us. And we do offer free consultation. So we're not the type of company um, where if you call us, you you have to worry about us trying to sign you up. Let's get you signed up right now right. because not everyone needs a tutor. Not everyone needs a coach. Sometimes consulting with a parent and giving them some advice on some things they can change at home has uh, been able to, we've been able to help families that way because everyone is not 
in a position to necessarily get a tutor. But those are some ways that you can know something is not quite right. Maybe I need to have the consultation. Maybe I need to seek advice from a professional um, who, who works with students on a regular basis. Now, what advice do you have for parents having, managing uh, their child, their young person, uh, a teenager at home uh, on, that's virtual uh, yes. you know, and managing them in that environment. Yes. You know, I, I, my phones have, my phones have been blowing up with parents. I don't know what to do. I'm so frustrated. And, you know, um, a lot of schools in the spring were, it was an urgent thing. So there were multiple platforms that had to be used there. No one really knew when they're supposed to log in. Are they supposed to have live instruction? Is it all independent? Um, I think that the schools have, have been a, have have been better are better prepared now for that situation. So one thing that I will say, and I have two kids in the house who are going through this. Mm. One is in first grade, one's in ninth grade. So day or day and night of what their schedules look like. <laughs> um, but planning ahead for the week is key. So this weekend we organized the, the room. Uh, we organized each of their rooms. They're in separate areas of the house. If you have students who are in different grades, I think that's a great idea to put them in separate locations. If they're close to the same grade, so usually, okay, they're both they're in high school or all in high school, you can put them in the same room. But normally, if you have a younger student and, a, and, and an older student, you want to keep them separated into their own space. But plan ahead for the week. Make sure their workstation has everything that they would need for the week. Sharpen pencils, paper, scratch paper, calculators. Um Anything that they they need or for their regular day, their notebooks are ready. Their assignments, if they have assignments over the weekend, are completed and everything is out and ready to go. But not only prepping for the week, but prep for the uh, each night for the next day. Because if they've already rearranged everything on their desk each day at the end of the day, you can you can spend you can say at the end of the day we're going to spend ten minutes preparing for tomorrow. Um, Or that evening after dinner, you could say, let's prepare for tomorrow. It doesn't take a lot of time, but having everything organized helps to keep a less cluttered mind when you're starting the day. Imagine if we go to work and we leave our desk in a mess before we leave work and we come back and it's like, oh, my goodness, it's so stressful because now you have to get organized and figure out things. It's the same way for the students. I also love to keep calendars. We have um, bulletin boards all over the place. We have whiteboards all over the place, but we love to print the calendar. Um, We use color coding on a calendar to keep track. Older students, I ask them to use their phones, use their iPads, the calendars on there, use electronic um, calendars because they're used to using electronic devices. Um, Also, make sure you're using resources like your teachers, your tutors, classmates, don't, um, you know, sit alone and and uh, ask ask other parents. I have parents texting me. We're texting each other. Like, what happened today? Do you know how we were supposed to do this? How we're we supposed to do this? You communicate with with other parents who are going through the same thing that you're going through, and you'll have you'll find that you'll get some great advice or some tips that could be helpful to you um, for your and for your student in navigating the virtual day. And how do you? I mean, we've. We've had a lot of different changes in the way the schools work, and and uh, I mean you're obviously independent of all the schools, but you know your business is dri- is to some degree driven by what's happening at the schools. So how does that work for you in terms of whether the school's virtual versus in person, uh, what have you? So the biggest change, is, the biggest change I would say would be the school day timing. Um, And as far as when students are available for tutoring, I do have students who are um, their school district is more is independent learning during the virtual time. So they have sessions that could be earlier in the day, whereas my other students, they that are face to face or synchronous is what they call it, where they're with their teacher during the day. They uh, require end of the day tutoring sessions, which is like a traditional end of the end of the day. So the biggest difference, I would say, would be scheduling. Um, because now when we normally would only have students at the end of the day, there are some students that are throughout the day. Um, if schools, when schools go back, we still will have the same programs. We'll still have our online where they can choose online 
uh, in the afternoons or weekends, and we'll still have face-to-face at our office. So they'll be able to come in and have face-to-face, or they'll be able to have the virtual online. Um, So that part doesn't change. We'll still be able to support the students. One thing that I do think will um, may happen is the fact that students normally have an opportunity for after school tutoring on site at their schools, which is not a possibility right now. So um, a lot of students who would normally be able to use that resource want to hire a tutor to help them or a coach to help them instead. So I can see where there may be some changes that would happen there, but that's great. You want to have the support from the school and the teachers um, because they're providing that opportunity for you. Uh, but otherwise, most of the majority of it will, will pretty much stay the same. Like I mentioned before, it's just the, the, um, the, the flexibility uh, of being able to just hit, hit, the, hit a button and you're on a session. Sure. Um, let's uh, talk about the different maybe subjects you offer. I mean, for, for uh, students, I mean, do you offer um, – uh, SAT, ACT, uh, coaching. I mean, t- talk about the different, um, uh, subject matters that you, that you help with. Absolutely. So for kindergarten uh, through uh, 12th grade, of course, your regular academic subjects, your math, sciences, social studies, um, and, uh, language arts, but we also do foreign languages. So, and ESL for those younger grades, because the, the schools who have ESL programs and they need some support with that. Um, As far as other programs outside of that, everything college prep, we do SAT and ACT, GRE. Um, We also help students with the ASVAB who are wanting to to go into the military. We have several students who participate in that program. Um, GED, we also offer GED, which is also a very popular program um, for our adults. But college essay writing is a biggie right now. So any families who are, you know, getting ready to start filling out applications for colleges this fall. Uh, They've been reaching out and we've spent hours working on essays because some students who are applying to multiple schools could have, you know, 10 to 12 essays that they have to write and they just want the support and they're not great writers or they're great writers, but not great writers about themselves. Mm. Um, and they need some support with that. So we definitely help with um, essay writing, study skills, um, uh, PSAT, anything that, that you can do. We try to make sure that we're able to support. We have a lot of foreign languages that are coming on board. Right now we offer Spanish, French, Hindi, um, but we have German coming on, Mandarin, Italian, and Japanese all coming very soon. Um, I have wow. attorneys on my staff, so we can help with LSAT. <laughs> um, really? Yes. Wow. So we're excited because that's new for us, and we're very excited about that. Wow. I was uh, I was going to get a, get around to that. How you help old dinosaurs like me? So <laughs> we, we, uh, I'm kidding, of course. But we are. You do have programs for adult <laughs> learners. Um, yes. Yeah. So obviously, LSAT may be one of those. But talk. And, and you mentioned GRE, GRE. But, yeah, but, but, um, uh, yes. dive into that a little more. So I, uh, so we have an ESL program, as I mentioned, which is great for, um, we have a lot of executives who English is not their uh, first language, but they're wanting to get better at communicating via email, via, um, inter-office communication and also during meetings, um, and so we we help them with that conversation partners to um, to to help with pronunciation and to understand, you know, dialect, because of, yes, in the United States, we have different dialects, um, you know, being in the South and they hear y'all a lot and they don't understand what that means or we're coming. And, you know, <laughs> like, what does that mean? So uh, <laughs> um, we do help with that. But for our adults, we also do professional development. So we have business writing um, support. Um, and also some uh, adults who are wanting to write a book and they're just needing some help with editing, some help getting started in writing the book, outlining to get things going. So we do help there as well. Um, 
we've had had different, you know, uh, interviewing skills, some, some people who are going back to work or changing careers and they haven't interviewed in a long time. We can help them with that, help them to practice, help them with resume writing, Uh, public speaking. If you're a, a, a business person and you do a lot of speaking in person and speaking engagements and you want to to get some help practicing and being better at creating and writing your speech and presenting that speech, we can support that as well. Awesome stuff here from uh, Rhonda Youngblood. Rhonda is the owner and executive director of Infinity Learning. Uh, Rhonda, this has been great. Congratulations on your uh, success. Uh, you've really Thank you. done well here over these last uh, few months in, in a terrible environment. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, but, uh, let's get the important stuff. Let's get, let folks know how they can connect with you because I'm sure there are folks that have heard this that, uh, would like to know more. Uh, so tell them how they can do that. Okay. Well, first of all, I will say my tagline is help me Rhonda. Everyone close to me that knows me in business and networking knows that I go by Help Me Rhonda. But my uh, I can be reached through um, our website at learningisinfinite.com. Uh, you can also email at info at learningisinfinite.com. And our phone number is 770-322-4185. Rhonda Young Club. Rhonda Youngblood, folks, easy for me to say. I'll get I'll get it out in a second. Sorry, Rhonda. Um, uh, she's the owner, executive director of Infinity Learning. Rhonda, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much, John. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, folks, just uh, another issue that you may need some help with along the way, and that is if you've got your own business and you've got administrative tasks that are dragging you down, or maybe you, your all your receipts are in a shoebox and you need some help with your bookkeeping. Well, the lady to call is S.E. Escobedo over at Office Angels, and she's got a whole heavenly team of angels that will uh, – she can go find out what your problem is, find one of her angels, and they fly in virtually. They've been doing that for 18 years, so they understand how that works. Uh they get the job done and they fly back out. So you can use them ongoing or as needed, um, how, whatever suits the problem you have. And uh, they're terrific. I know this because I use them myself. So um, give Essie a call at 770-442-9246. Explain your problem and she'll be glad to help you. And uh, Or you can go to the uh, website, officeangels.us, to find out more. And just a reminder to folks that we are on all the major podcast apps. North Fulton business radio is the search term. Um, I have yet to be stumped on one. You can't find us on, uh, check us out there, uh, and do, do me a favor. And, uh, it's really not for me. It's for our guests like Rhonda, um, who we want to promote and help connect with folks that need their services. Uh, go and review us on your favorite podcast app. Give us a nice review because it helps people find the show and uh, it helps them find in turn our guest. So um, uh, you can also, if you want to go to our archive, you can find it online at North Fulton business radio.com. And we're on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, North Fulton BRX. So for my guest, Rhonda Youngblood, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio.